And uh, Brian, where are you? There you are, Brian. Brian came down, local union tree, tree trimmer. If you need some trees trimmed, get with Brian. Uh, he's uh, highly qualified, and so he's in town. Good to have you with us, Brian. Reasonably priced. Reasonably priced. Oh, uh, folks, storms, storms uh, surge, and uh, I was standing in Bob Webb's living room last night watching uh, the ex-president of the United States get shot in the air. And uh, if you don't think storms are real and they roll, I can remember back to 1979, I was 17 years old, and Hurricane Alicia burrowed through Alvin, and I sat out on the porch and watched the basketball goal get thrown down the street and come back the other way, and I thought it was all funny, and then I grew up. Uh, the, uh, we've had a lot of storms, but this morning, we're going we're gonna to turn a page. And I tell you, I was reading my Bible, and you know what the greatest storm in my mind was? When Jesus Christ was about to go to the cross. There was about to be a storm. And uh, right before he went to the cross, he met, met with his disciples. And uh, turn to uh, John chapter 14. I'd like to read the first six verses of John chapter 14 to you before we go to prayer. And Jesus said to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled, but believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if it were not so, I would have told you. For I go before you to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may also be. And you know the way where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know this way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning in the one, one path, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Lord, we thank you that this morning, although the fences have been knocked down and the trees have been crushed, Lord, uh, our walk with you can still be strong and we can gather together and worship you and you have preserved this church and you've preserved your people. Lord, we thank you that, uh, that the loss of life is minimal, Lord. Uh, the things on earth here are going to pass away, yet the word of God is going to stand forever. So this morning, Lord, as Kurt comes to this pulpit and he opens your word, I just ask that you help us to focus. Lord, I, uh, I pray for uh, uh, the leaders of Alvin, Brazoria County, Texas, and the United States, Lord, that they would make good decisions regarding all the storms going on. Lord, I think of former President Donald Trump and what he's going through, Lord. Oh, that this would help him turn his heart towards you as uh, they've attempted to take his life. Lord, uh, guide us. Help us to be uh, followers of the one true God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Thank you for this service, Lord. Please bless this time of singing and let our hearts make a joyful noise for you. I pray in your name. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Let's stand. We got time, Tim, if you want to do it. <laughs> when something when the Lord lays it on your heart, brother, you just go for it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> John chapter fourteen. Excellent passage of the scripture. As you look at the context of it, we've got our Savior, Jesus Christ, and he knows exactly what's about to happen. Yet he's got these disciples and uh, good men, good men that have been uh, out on the beaten path with him for the last two and a half, three years, uh, watching him perform, perform some of the greatest miracles. And uh, you would think no doubt at all in their mind what's going on. They've been right there with him. It's kind of like George Cooper, right, brother? Gone to Alvin Bible Church all your life, been able to, all your life, all my life, all my life. You've been, in Alvin, you've been around God's word for a long time in your life. So you would say, man, old George, he's got it together. He shouldn't have any doubt. Yet, you look at this passage, and the minute Jesus says something strong to him, Thomas is like, hold on, what are you doing? Where are you going? We don't know. And so when you first look at this passage, you're like, man, that Thomas, he must just be the weak link, you know? And uh, yet, no, that's human nature. 
That's the very human nature. When the storm hits and it starts to blow, first thing we do sometimes is we doubt. And so as Jesus has told them that he's going to have to go away from them, the first thing he says in chapter 14 as he starts out is, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Folks, when we're in the midst of a storm, and it can be a storm like what blew up, it can be a storm with a health-related concern or an issue, it can be a storm in your children's life or your brothers and sisters or your neighbor's life, the first thing you need to remember is, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe in also in me. It starts there. I'll be honest with you. The first thing that some of us want to do when the storm hits, run away. Run away. You know the first thing I do, Ruth? I look in my bank account to see how much money I've got to see if I can repair everything that could possibly blow down. I'm a contractor. I do a lot of budgets and bids and such for a living. So the first thing I think, Luke, is, if the tree hits my house, do I have $10,000 in the bank in order to repair my house? No. Hold on. Slow down, Tim. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe first in me. Do I have the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ when things first hit? Or do, the first, do I first look to my ability? Because I can charge it pretty hard. I can get up at the crack of dawn and I can go all day. And so... I have a propensity to look at what Tim can do first. That's not what God's calling me to. God's calling me in my faith to first look to him and to first thing, get my heart and my mind under control and believe him first. The first thing, when I looked out the window Monday morning and I started to see the destruction in my backyard and I saw the trees down in my front yard, uh, I got to be honest with you, the tree was 14 foot from my daughter where she was sleeping that went down. It was this round. It went away from our house. And, man, I was stunned. I was like, how many times are you going to do this, Lord? How many times are you going to preserve me for what you have planned for me? And i got to tell you, every one of you here this morning that he preserved, he's got a plan for you. And I don't know exactly what that plan is, but he's got something. There's a reason why he wants you here. There's a reason and an opportunity that's going to be in your life where you can testify and when you look at Thomas in this passage, if you uh, ever get a chance, read at what happened to all of the Lord Jesus Christ's disciples and where they went after he died on the cross for their sins and what they did. And they did great things. Thomas preached for the rest of his life. He, I think Kurt India was Thomas. Yeah, I think Thomas was martyred in India by a Hindu priest who was jealous that he had so many more followers than Thomas was building in India. Went to what would be considered the far side of the world at that time and preached the gospel for the rest of his life and died a martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. God's got things in store. He had plans in store for Thomas. Now, I'll be honest with you, I think of Thomas and I think, this guy needs to be backhanded, man. He's just, uh, he's the one doubting uh, at every turn. And, but then I look at Philip, Philip questioning Jesus. I look at Peter. Peter, oh yeah, yeah, Lord, I'm, I'm going to follow you into battle. I even brought my sword with me. And yet, here it is three times Peter denies Christ. That's the propensity for us to do. That's the propensity for us to fall away and to, be, and to doubt. And when we fall under pressure, what's the answer to that? To look to God's word. My house is very important to me. I built it as a young man. It's my fortress. I, I, everything. And yet... If it were to blow away tomorrow, what is it going to matter in eternity? You see, my Savior, Jesus Christ, has died on the cross, and he's gone before me, and he's built a mansion for me in heaven that makes my house pale in comparison. And that's where we're going to spend eternity. Now, that said, I value what the Lord Jesus Christ has given to me, and uh, I would encourage you to value what the Lord Jesus Christ gives to you, but then to also examine it, how can you use it? Me and Robert are good friends. Robert pulled into my driveway. It's like, Robert, man, you ought to just come over and spend the night at my house upstairs, man. And uh, he still had to go to work, and he had to take to his place. But uh, at the end of the day, how do we use what God's given us? Uh, I, was, uh, I talked to Robert uh, about a generator, and I immediately called Bob Webb because I knew Bob had an extra generator, and Bob said, yeah, borrow it out. Yep, come get it. How do we use what God has blessed us with 
to his honor and glory to love one another and for the world and such. I don't know, but I'm confronted by it. I'm confronted by the fact that we need to examine that, how we use what the Lord's given us, because all that's going to pass away, and he's building a mansion for us in glory, and he's gone before us to prepare that place. So when he comes again and receives you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, you have the assurance that someday you're going to be with him. Last week we had the baptism. Glorious, glorious moment of, of people verifying that they have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and that they want that to be their public testimony, that they now can take assurance and they can take hold of the fact that the Lord has called them unto himself and that someday they're going to spend eternity with him if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. If you don't know him, man, you got to be scared of these storms. you you got to be guarded against everything because you got to make it last as long as you can here. But if you realize that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and you can have that eternal security, it's everything. It's everything. Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I would encourage you to figure out how on a daily basis to read God's word and pray. Set apart times. I like to look at a verse in the morning. There was nothing better than Monday morning to look at God's word. First thing, during the midst of the storm. If I don't practice that and put that practice into my life on a regular basis... Monday morning I get up, the first thing I look at is I start counting trees. Start looking to see if the neighbor's been damaged. I start calling people. But by the idea that I do something regular in my life, what, where is your regular prayer life? Where is your regular life for examining God's wording and applying it to your heart? Applying it to your life. Where does that fit in? Because it fits in somewhere important in my life, I had that benefit going into Monday because the rest of the day was chaos. The rest of the day was slowly figuring out what all was destroyed, hearing that there were 1.8 million people in the Houston area without power, and uh, uh, and we fast forward. We fast forward to yesterday afternoon in Bob Webb's living room. Somebody's trying to shoot the former president of the United States in the year. This world is chaotic. It's full of sin. It's full of trouble. And yet, our Savior, who died on the cross for our sins, has assured us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Donald Trump's not the way, the truth, and the life. I want Donald Trump to be preserved. I want Donald Trump to live a life that brings honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the answer. That's who we need to look to. That's who we need to trust. That's the standard that we need to apply to our life. And... uh, I got to be honest with you, uh, I was pretty frustrated some this week. Because you see, I got a few of those phone calls where people said, uh, like you to come do something for me. You know, I got one picket missing off the fence. George Cooper's roof is, uh, uh, is spread back on his pump shed, and I got somebody calling me asking me if I could come put up one picket on their fence. So I, I'll call you, I'll call you. And, and, but you know what that leads to in my life? leads to frustration and sin if I don't realize what if what if that person is the person that I need to go put that picket back up for and ask them how their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ is what if everything that we look at that might be something that we say this is ridiculous or why did you call what if we take all that and we turn it into an opportunity for the Lord Jesus Christ to tell him that he's the way the truth and the life I don't know I don't know what God's bringing into each one of our lives each day. I don't know how you're able to reach out to your neighbor. I walked out about noon at my house with three trees this round down all the way out into the street and I fired up my chainsaw. In 20 minutes I had four neighbors standing there. Two of them I didn't know. I didn't know where they came from. They were starting to haul limbs out of my yard and uh, by the end of the week my wife was able to make a couple of lemon pound cakes and take them down to and meet them, and now she knows their name, now they know us, and they're like, we've seen y'all all these years, but we just, you know, 
I said, well, we got to start waving at each other. What, what if I go back to those people later on and say, hey, man, appreciate you helping me and such. Do you have a, fam- do you have a church you go to? Do you know anything about them? What if I use that opportunity to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's a challenge. You know, it makes me nervous. What would I have to do? i got to go down to somebody's door and knock on their front door and say, hey, just God's put something on my heart. What if he brought those people into my life? What if he bring, brings people into your life over the last week that you can love or you can share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ with? Man, I'm challenged. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one's going to come to the Father but by him. Nobody's going to work their way to heaven. Nobody's going to cut up enough trees, Brian, right? No matter how many trees we cut up, it's not going to get us to heaven. But we can share. And I'm challenged today to say to you, Whoever came into your life this week, whoever you're interacting with, it's not done. It's going to go on for a couple more weeks of pretty good intensity. Would you consider the idea to turn every opportunity into an opportunity to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you consider the idea that loving others as you love yourself would be a good idea? Would you consider that and put that foremost on your mind? It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard as things continue to lay in the yard and uh, we got damage to clean up and jobs are chaotic and such. But I tell you, hide the word of God in your heart. Strengthen your prayer life and decide where you are going to ramp up your witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, I come before you this morning and uh, I'm convicted, Lord, that uh, there were times this week where I came real close to falling into sin with frustration. And yet, Lord, uh, you were there. And when I look to you, and uh, Lord, and when I uh, continue to use your word as a guidance in my life, Lord, it's a comfort. And so this morning, Lord, I look at this body and I ask that you would convict them that storms will come and go and our homes are going to pass away. And yet your word is going to stand forever. And would this body, Lord, consider being more active in their witness for you? Would the members of Alvin Bible Church consider, Lord, being willing to tell others that they hardly know about the Lord Jesus Christ? Lord, would they love one another in such a way that uh, brings honor and glory to you? Lord, uh, I'm, I'm, it's heavy on my heart, Lord, uh, as Larry tells us that Mateo is considering salvation, Lord. I beg, Lord, that you would help that young man to be convicted and that uh, he would want to bring you into his heart and in his life, Lord. He's close, and I just ask that you would make Larry a powerful voice in his life. Lord, compared to uh, salvation, nothing else matters. The trees, the houses, uh, the cars, the land, none of it matters compared to the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. And, Lord, we have the opportunity to share with others. So I stand before you, the Lord, this morning convicted, and I just ask that you help this body to uh, consider changing who they are and continuing to uh, serve you. I pray in your name. Amen. I invite you to stand, and as we prepare to sing, I want to read Isaiah 40, verse 8. It says, The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. When I drove out of Alvin last Monday afternoon folks were stacking branches out on the side of the road all of the leaves on those branches were nice and green I've been driving back and forth all week long and as I came into town this morning I was I was just surprised by how brown all those branches have become in just seven days just seven days the grass withers our flowers fade word of the Lord stands forever. We can be thankful for that. Let's sing. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free thank you lord 
before we close, I just want to see one more word of thanks. I just want to thank Alvin Bible Church for being uh, a church that we're free enough that when the Lord speaks, uh, we can accept that. And um, I just, I'm grateful that, that I don't feel the pressure to get up here and, and, and do a sermon that God didn't call me to do. Larry can testify this week how much I struggled <laughs> with putting a sermon together. Sandra, too. I really struggled all week with my sermon. And, and last night I thought, this is a terrible sermon. <laughs> you know? It's like, God, I just don't even want to do this. And, and so I told him yesterday that he should come up here this morning and explain to all of you that his week has been just as crazy as all of ours and that he just had nothing this week, that he had struggled and struggled and struggled and it just hadn't come. And he said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And so God took care of it. Yeah, and when I heard Tim, I was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> God had me covered. So uh, thank you, brother. They agree. They agree. <laughs> So I, I just just praise God that, that, you know, I preached on it not too long back how that's the way the church operates. And, and that's, brother, that, that's, I meant it then. And so thank you for being willing to step up. And, uh, and Tim said, when I, I, I'm serious, Tim. He said, no, I'll just ramble. No, he didn't. He spoke from the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Amen. Amen.